with Apostle T. B. Walker. Good evening, everyone. I'm Apostle T.B. Walker. I want to take this time to welcome you to our Thursday evening Bible study. Certainly glad to have you here with us today as we begin to look at the book of Galatians. We're going to be looking at Galatians today, chapter number one. Um, I was going to read verses one through six, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to read verse number one, then I'm going to skip down to verse six and seven for this particular study. I think it's really important for us to really grasp, grasp this. So listen, for those that are taking notes, get your devices out, get ready for some study, because I think there's going to be some great revelation that you're going to need for your life now. So again, certainly glad to have you here. Do not forget to share. I'm going to mention this at the end as well for those that are going to be coming on. But listen, tell your friends, go ahead and write it in the comments. Encourage people to make sure that they share. Let's look at the book. Uh, once again, the book of Galatians, chapter number five. I mean, chapter number one. And I'm going to read verse number one, then skip down to six and seven. Hi, mom. And then we're going to have a word of prayer, and we're going to get directly dive deep into the Word of God. Let me read this for you. This is coming out of the ESV version, and here's what it reads. I, Paul, Paul, an apostle not from men, nor through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Verse 6, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you into the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. That's the word. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for this hour, this time that we have together to be able to uh, delve into your word and to be able to sit at your feet and receive from you that rhema word from heaven. God, we bless you right now that we know that you are here in the midst of us because you have promised where two or three are gathered together in your name, you'd be right there in the midst. And we thank you right now for being with us. No matter where we are, no matter how far we are spread apart, that you have even allowed this system, the internet, to be here, that we would be able to communicate and to fellowship, even in cyberspace, one with another. So we bless you right now that though we may not be in the building together, we are in the kingdom together. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, just giving you a little overview, uh, and you know, looking at this book of Galatians, this is really a critical, critical book for every believer to really uh, look at and to study. Uh, you know, especially this particular section, but the whole book of Galatians, because it deals with our lifestyle, but it also gives us some warnings concerning some of the things that can creep in and encroach upon the liberty that is in Christ. Uh, we'll see as we look into this book that there is a departure from the gospel in the ancient time. And we'll see here how closely that correlates with the departure from the gospel. The errors that are being proclaimed as the gospel then are very similar to so many of the things that are, that are happening now. The Christians there were moving and diverging into another gospel, uh, and they didn't know the seriousness of their error in the same way that it is today. So it's important for us to really analyze and to understand what the Galatian church was experiencing so that we can recognize this, this similar era in teaching today because it's happening today. Now, let's look at a little bit of a timeline. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, Paul and Barnabas have gone forth now in their first missionary journey into the south uh, area of Galatia. They've uh, touched Antioch. They've gone to Iconium, they've gone to Lystra, they've gone to Derby. Now, uh, they have now come back to Antioch where, according to Acts, they've spent a considerable period of time. It is here in Antioch where they hear first about the Judaizers that are uh, encroaching on the liberty of those that are in, um, that are in the, the other areas of Galatia. Uh, but, you know, when you look at this, the, the Judaizers also showed up in Antioch. And so Paul now finds out that the Galatia, that many of the churches in Galatia, in this area of Galatia, because it's not just one place, it is actually a region, and that many of the churches in this region are being uh, falling prey to these Judaizers. And what a Judaizer is, it, it's, it's a faction of Christian Jews, there, some that were born Jewish, some that were non-Jewish that had kind of converted to Judaism, but they regarded the Old Testament Levitical law as something that had to be added or as a part of Christianity. It was still binding for all Christians, even though Paul is going around and he's preaching 
that the, we are not bound anymore by the law, but that we operate now under grace. They were now looking and saying, yes, we take everything else, but you still must keep the Levitical laws. Those are still binding, even for those that are Christian. So arriving, as they arrived in Antioch, and Paul is actually seeing them in the area physically where he is, and also getting letters from the other churches in Galatia, you know, this has now come to his attention. It's intensified his concern concerning their liberty. So Paul now pins this letter to the Galatians. And he starts out in verse number one, and he says, and I want to, before we get there, I want to make sure that you understand, listen, this is interactive. If you got uh, questions, please don't hesitate to put those in the comments. We're going to answer those real time right now tonight. So make sure that you, uh, that, you know, if, if you have something you want to contribute, make sure that you add that there. But listen, let's get into this. Paul says, Paul, an apostle, not sent from men, nor through the agency, or not through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Now, when you begin to look at this, this is really important because Paul starts out asserting his apostleship, right? He, as he's sending this letter to the Galatians, he realizes that if they understand who's sending this letter, he wants it to have, and he's expecting it to have a much greater impact. You know, when you begin to look at this, when, when there's a letter directly here written from the apostle, Paul is now expecting that the Galatians will understand that this is tantamount, if you will, to a letter d directed, like originating from the mouth of God. Though it's spoken by the messenger, spoken by the apostle, these are words that are coming directly by God. Not simply, you know, he's not just simply mimicking or saying something that he wants to say, but God is using him, has established him. You know, when you look at the word apostle, and we've got to really understand what that apostle means, it's not just a person who simply gives a message. This is not like the mailman. You can't use the mailman analogy here because he's not just a messenger. But Paul now is a person with divine authority. That There's been divine authority, divine certification, divine power. You know, God, he, God has presented credentials by the miracles that Paul wrote. Is, is, is doing by the the uh, the uh, uh, re revelation that Paul is giving by the authorization from the other apostles that have now also pointed and said yes he's one of us all of those things are the credentials that Paul is walking around with this is his official status so Paul is saying this is not just coming from just some concerned citizen no this is actually coming from directly from heaven listen when you get a letter you know in the mail you can kind of sort through. I saw, you know, I was looking at the mail today. You know, just kind of sorting through and sorting through and sorting through. But now, if you sort through and find a letter from the IRS, right? If you see a letter from the Department of the Treasury, if you see a letter from the state, you know, it, 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 it perks your ears up. It perks your eyes up. It, it gets your attention simply because you recognize it originates from a government agency with power and authority. So that's what Paul is doing. Now, you know, now realizing here again, when you look at this revelation in this time as it is now, there are many types of understandings of what an apostle is. The Greek word for apostle is sent one, right? So uh, the Judaizers uh, indicated, they, they apply, implied it, and even though they may not have said it directly, some of them implied that they were sent from the Jerusalem church. Right? They, they were emissaries, if you will, from the Jerusalem church. They were apostles, sent ones from the Jerusalem church. They're those who looked at Paul as, and Barnabas as apostles because they had brought letters uh, you know, and, and taken a collection uh, from you know, the areas of Galatia and, and, back to the, and taken those collections back to the elders in, in Jerusalem. So they were sent. So they were apostles of Antioch, right? That's how some people saw. These Judaizers are apostles from Jerusalem. They're apostles of the Jerusalem church. Paul is an apostle of the church in Antioch. But Paul comes and says, not so. Not, not so. I'm not from this church. That's, that's not. I'm not from an anti apostle from this region. Paul says, I am not sent from men, nor through the agency of man. It's not, my apostleship is not given to me by man, nor does it come through man. It wasn't because there was some ceremony, some, you know, the, uh, you know a, a coronation that, that happened. Paul says, no, none of that happened, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, right? So when you begin to look at this, Paul starts out by saying, listen, my authority doesn't come from man. 
Man didn't give that to me. It originated, and this is what Paul says, it came directly from God. It came directly from God, his standing as an apostle. And listen, there, you know, this is important even for us to be able to understand what's our standing based on. You know, there, there are people who hear, hear from God, know what God has said, but are still rejecting their position because they're looking for man to, to ordain them. To, and when I say ordain you, I'm not talking about just so you can work in the church, but even to get your ministry started, to do what God has called you to do. There are people who don't realize that God is able to do just this very same thing. Paul said, listen, my apostleship is not based upon opinion polls. There was no human council that came together that said, okay, you know what? We authorize you to be who God called you to be. We, we're giving you your papers so that you can now, Paul, do what you've been called to do. Paul says, for, well, if that's the case, then men can call my anointing and my gifting into question. Men can give it to me, and then, of course, men can take it away. But Paul says, listen, my authority is not based on people. It's not based on men. Paul makes it clear when he says, you know what, this gospel that I have, no man taught me. Now, it doesn't mean that Paul does not understand authority. It does not mean that Paul does not agree that authority is in the church, that those, there are those that have authority, in the, even in our natural world, that Paul is clear to make sure that we honor and respect those that have authority over us. So Paul recognizes authority, but Paul is telling us about the authority that he's coming in because he's got some pretty strong words for the citizens here in Galatia, and he is expecting them to receive it in the right way simply because there's an authority figure that's actually speaking this not just some guy who's saying well i've been observing some things and there's a couple things i don't like and let's have a rap session about it no paul is not saying that so when you understand who he gets his authority from that's also meant to touch these believers because it comes from jesus christ and it comes from the from god the father the father and the son both validate paul so Paul is very blunt here in his message. He's very direct here in his message, but that directness is because not only is he a genuine apostle, so I can I can do that, but Paul is blunt here about his apostleship because it has been called into question. There are those that say, well, you're not an apostle because you actually were not a genuine apostle with the 12. You weren't with those. So as Paul now is coming and saying, I need you to understand where my apostleship comes from. I got it from the same place that the 12 got it from. My apostleship comes from the same place that Peter got his. Peter didn't get his from seminary. Peter got his because the Lord said, and upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He says to Peter, who do you say that I am? He says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. He says, great, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my father, which is in heaven. So in other words, Paul said, Peter got his ministry from Jesus Christ and God the Father. Well, guess what? That's exactly where I'm getting my ministry. And, and so when you begin to look at the credentials here, Paul wants to make sure they understand who's writing this letter to them. And he expected that when they understood that this is coming from apostolic authority, that they were going to respond. So, but, so let's check out what Paul is writing in this letter. Well, let's skip down to verse number six. Paul says, I am astonished. Now, once you get this, he says, I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ on our turning to a different gospel. Paul says, listen, I am absolutely blown away. Now, what we need to look at here, and I think it's important, is note what's missing, right? We're going to deal with what's said, but let me tell you what's missing. Every, in every greeting, one of the things about Paul, Paul gives these great doxologies, right? He gives these great endings, but he also gives these great beginnings. Paul gives great greetings to the churches. You know, great greetings unto you, of Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. You know, and I, I greet you in his matchless name. And he, he greets them and congratulates them on some work that they're doing, their sincere faith. None of that is here. When you begin to look at this, this is this is the sole instance where Paul omits any expression of thanksgiving. He's not coming and saying, "Hey guys, let's start like we used to, like we usually do." The other letters that you see, Paul is is happy to hear. Oh, even when he's not, when he's about to deal with something serious, Paul has still greeted them because he looks and says, "Well, there's still some good things that are going on here that I want to compliment you guys on." Before I get to the tough stuff, not here. This is a level of seriousness that they probably don't even understand. And so 
his approach here is because of the severity of the problem. Paul recognized there's no need for sugar here. You know, we need to go straight here. There's no need for cut. There's no need for any kind of chaser. We need to go straight to the thing right here because this is serious. Paul's amazed. But Paul's not amazed even just what they have done, right? He's not just, a, I'm amazed that you've gone to another, that you left Christ and gone to a, a different gospel. Yeah, we're going to get to that. But that's not the thing that's, that amazes Paul. Paul says, I'm amazed that it happened so fast. I'm amazed that you turned away from Christ so soon. Listen, the pandemic exposed so much of that in people that you could scratch your head and say, no, wait a minute, it seemed like you were on fire. And I'm amazed that it only took a year for you to lose your heat for Christ. I'm amazed that all this years of service and somehow a virus and you just decided that like you don't, you don't believe anymore. You don't know if you feel this thing anymore. I'm not talking about church. I'm not talking about the building. Everybody was shut down. I'm talking about faith in Christ. I'm talking about people experimenting with what they knew. I'm talking about people going and having the basis of the true gospel and in a year and a half coming out of a pandemic with a totally different gospel, not believing any of what they learned or mingling what they learned with some special new fangled truths that are there. Paul says, listen, what I'm amazed at is that your, your, your gospel roots were so shallow with all your gifts, with all your profession of love for Christ, I'm astonished. And this is not like Paul just saying, whoa. No, Paul is saying, this is a straight up rebuke to you. I'm rebuking you for being so shallow in your faith. I'm rebuking you that some shysters could really come in and talk this talk after all the manifestations that you've experienced, the, lit, the time that you've experienced with Christ, and yet now you just left him so fast. He says, I'm, I'm shocked that you're deserting him. Now, when you look at this, this is abandonment of him. Paul said, I'm amazed that you're turning from the only hope of salvation that you have. I'm amazed that I taught you, you received it, that forgiveness of sin can only come through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. You believing in him by faith, Christ and Christ alone, you all had that. You received it. How fast did you turn? No, wait a minute. But Paul says, I need you to understand something. You're not turning away from a doctrine. And I know you probably think that you are. But Paul says, I'm shocked that you're turning away from the person of Jesus Christ. See, there are many people who do who separate Jesus from his word, right? And they don't realize that Jesus is his word. That they separate Jesus from his doctrine, never realize that Jesus is his doctrine. He gave the doctrine. He says, I am that I am, which means that, you know, when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the light, the followers of the way are followers of Christ. So Jesus says, take up your cross and follow a doctrine. Yeah, that's me. Take up your cross and follow me. What I say, do. So when you begin to look at this, one of the things that I want you to begin to see, when you begin to really look at this, they were turning away. They, they were turning away from the, the doctrine. And, 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 and turning away, Paul says, are you turning away from this person who called you to this grace in Christ? And, and, and it's a grace in Christ. Ten seconds. Paul emphasized, and let me tell you what Paul said. Paul said, God called them to this grace. That's exactly what's there. God called them to this grace. They were chosen for this grace. And I want you to really be able to get your head around the fact that they were, Paul says, you're turning away from the grace of God. You're turning away from the very principles of grace. They were turning away from the grace of God. They thought they were turning toward another gospel, but in truth, they were only turning toward human achievement. That's what we really have to be careful with today, that we don't look at the gospel and, and, and start thinking to ourselves, we're, we're turning away from anything else other than the grace of God and moving toward human achievement. And when you abandon grace for what looks like a, a better way, you're turning to a different way. Paul says, listen, I want to warn you. You're turning to a different gospel. That's important, and I want you to grasp that. I want you to really get that. You know, 
and, and, and looking at this, this is extremely important. Listen, if there's a problem, because I, I'm, I'm looking at and there may be an issue with the video, if there's any issue whatsoever with the, uh, because we, we, it looks like we may have some battery issues here. So if there's any problems with the battery, we'll, we'll be back to finish this. But I want you to really grasp this. I want you to get this. He says, you're turning to a different gospel. Now, why would they give up gospel? Why would they give up the freedom of the gospel that only enslaves them? Let me tell you why. And again, if we have any problems with the battery and it goes out, I want you to get this. It can only be happy because they were of the attractiveness of this gospel. There's an attraction that comes when there's, you're dealing with human achievement. There's an attraction that comes with, you know, what I do, power that's working through me, how great I am. And so whatever the, the reason here, they are literally turning to a gospel that for them is easier to understand. Listen, there's a reason why people, you know, will turn sometimes. And, and, and listen, this is the first threat to the gospel. It's more comfortable. They, they came to a God. Works, we can do what I do. Listen, our minds aren't comfortable with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's counterintuitive. When you really understand, we're not programmed to think that way. We're really not programmed to think in this way. And we need to have the gospel of liberty preached to us constantly over and over and over again so that we do not fall into this because our natural man cannot believe it. The natural man can't comprehend it. And because of this very same thing, we are susceptible in the same way they were susceptible of receiving another gospel. They, they, they Listen, they, the people who promoted this gospel probably said, listen, Paul's got his way and we've got our way. You've got your way of thinking. Let's agree to disagree. You know, I mean, listen, it's it's really not that different of a message. You know, he's got his truth, and we've got our truth. He has his gospel, we have our gospel. Paul said, absolutely not. He rejected that. Paul said, listen, anybody who comes to you, I don't care whether it's an angel, whether it's an emissary that said they come from us, anybody who preaches another gospel, let him be a curse. Paul comes and says, I need you to understand, this is not a legitimate alternative. There is no a legitimate alternative alternative. And I want you to receive that. Again, if we have a battery issue and this goes out, I need you to make sure you hold on to that and you get that. Because Paul says that there is no other gospel. There's not another. And when you get this, Paul is making sure, and I want you to know, any other gospel other than the gospel of Jesus Christ and Christ alone, any other way to, to heaven, any other way to Christ, any other way to please God other than through faith in Jesus Christ alone, is not the way. To, in order, anything that legitimizes work, human achievement, your accomplishment, is not the gospel. Paul says, no, it's not, there is not another one. Paul recognized, that, and he wants him to recognize, this was not another gospel at all. Listen, if you want something sweet, right, and you say, I want a Snickers bar, what would you think if somebody came to you and handed you some gum, right? They're both, they both have sugar, right? They're both sweet. But that's not the same. That's a totally different thing. So if somebody hands you a piece of winter fresh, wouldn't you look and say, I was looking for Snickers. You're coming and saying, well, it's all pretty much the same thing. And wouldn't you say, Snickers is not the same thing as a winter fresh piece of gum? No, no way. The, the, the Twix and, and, and a candy bar might look similar, but they are still different. And Paul is saying, don't get bamboozled having somebody make you think that you're eating a real Snickers bar when you what you really have is nothing.